It's time to bring you yet another amazing episode. And now, welcome your host. Hello, this is Lyle Olich from Mobile TV and the host. On Lyle Olich, uh, we discuss and we focus on disruptive yet constructive mindset conversations on topics and subjects that is related to personal development and self-improvement. We've come to realize the importance of embracing self development improvement and also personal development along the part of our life uh, because uh, we really need to move from where we are to where we need to be if we truly want to have a, a really transform and fulfilled life. All of the innate gift sets, the potential that lies within us can only come to the fore and be maximized and enjoyed when we look inwards, ask the questions that need to be asked. And I trust you and I, I believe and guarantee that the answers will always come if we don't give up. Now, when the answers come, what we do with the answers is what is truly important at the end of the day. This is the mission and the focus of the world in Mobile Stephen, offering disruptive mindset conversations that is going to move you from where you have to where you need to be. Today on the show, I will be moving towards uh, spirituality in some way, uh, professional development in another way. I have Andrea Whelan, who is an author. He's the CEO of Gandamon Yuga and also uh, Andre Kell School. Thanks for joining me, Andrea Whelan. Thank, thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for joining me, um, Andrea. You are not talking of the book, Stillness and the Storm. We will be diving into that along the course of our discussions. Mm -hmm. But we want to really talk about the storms of life and how we can wait through to overcome them at the end of the day. Uh, the first question I'd like to ask is, how or why do storms happen to the man? Sorry, can you repeat the question, please? How or why do storms happen to man? Hmm. I think this is nature. I think this is the, the ebb and the flow of life. I think that uh, there's a series of opposites in nature. And when there is light, then comes dark. When there is dark, then comes light. And yoga and the practice of stillness is a way to observe that this is happening to understand that on the outside in the world, it also happens on the inside within our minds. And once we learn that we can control the mind, then maybe the storms don't knock us down as far the next time it comes. Maybe we can rise up a little bit quicker uh, the next time. And so there's a, a middle path um, that can be found for when these storms kind of happen. But I think it comes also, because we can handle it. And I think more women and more people need to know that we can handle hard things. We are the storm and we are the calm as well. All right. Now, you mentioned controlling our mind. How do we uh, do that? The mind is a trickster and it's a little bit of a liar. And what I found through my yogic practice, uh, the study of Reiki energy, um, is you need ways to cut into the mind. That's why we have stories. For some people, it's music. Some people can read a book. Um, all of these different uh, techniques are ways to go inside the mind to touch ultimately the heart. That's what we're going for. When you have, a, what I did to write Stillness in the Storm was be still and fall into stillness from the storms that happened to me, it came from great loss, but also I had my yoga studio and my yogic practice. So it really, in feeling the loss of one, my best friend, the loss of another best friend, the two people that I talk to the most every single day, I just went with the waves of this a couple of years ago and really went into the practice of stillness. And what you notice when you're in stillness is that, um, it's not still and it's not quiet and that there are different types of silence. Um, this is a way that you can control your mind. It's a practice and it's a way of life. And it's, it's one method to keep the mind that's always moving to keep it still. And in that, you receive insight. There's gifts. The universe meets you. And there's gifts for being quiet. There's gifts for being still. You can hear your heart song. You can hear your inner intelligence. So it's stillness and it's stopping, but it's not quiet and it's not nothing. 
if that makes sense. Uh, right. <laughs> yeah, thanks for sharing that. But to some of us who doesn't think of practicing yoga or meditation, you know, mm -hmm. some of us we start to go into therapy, which is something more popular at such a time as this. Oh, or where do we really want to join this challenging period of our life? Or where do we really need to seek solace from? Mm -hmm. That's a it's a good point because when you're going to therapy, when you're doing those things, what are you doing? You're stopping from your everyday routine and you're taking an hour for yourself. This is so yoga and meditation has a kind of reputation that it has to be being in a posture, um, you know, arms up in the air, uh, your foot behind you. And that's not what's happening now. I think we learned during COVID, during the pandemic, the shutdown, that you don't need to be at a yoga studio to find peace. Certainly, I traveled the world, the mountaintops of Brazil, to try and find peace. Our consciousness is lifted, and we can have peace. The moment we close our eyes and feel our breath in our body, we can feel that peace. And the peace that we're looking for at the top of the mountains is a peace that we bring there with us. So really going to therapy and, you know, if we take those words out of it, going to yoga and going to meditation, this is really about just sitting with yourself and sitting quiet with yourself. And so what happens is your mind will tell you, you want the chicken nuggets in the fridge. You want to answer that phone call. What's that knock on the door? Always to distract you. <clears throat> but, <clears throat> excuse me. But there's a power within us that is so much greater than that. And this, you might notice simply in prayer, you notice there's like a silent power, but that's always there. And if you can sit still and just have those couple minutes for yourself, just to bring attention to your breath, it's miraculous. There's a kingdom of peace within us right now, right now. Andre, my audience would like to know uh, what life expect from us when storms happen. You know, life is full of expectations. Life, we always expect one or two things from us during any challenging times of our life. Now, when storms come overwhelming us, how do we react to it or how do we respond? Love. Love is my answer to every single question at this point in my life. It's love. And what are we doing? If you're stopped, it's just taking a second to stop and breathe, okay? So say life comes. You can, you, the thing is, something is always coming and something is always passing away. In yoga practice, you lift your arms up for the inhale. You lift your hands down for the exhale. Something's always coming. Something's always passing. We never quite get there. Why? Because we're already here. When the storms come, take a second, feel your breath, be calm. What's around you right now? Just noticing these things in the five senses is an instant way to stay calm and stay connected to your heart center. Just noticing what's around you. I have a crystal, five things. It will calm the mind. You can take an extra breath. When you take an extra breath, you are coming from your more creative place and not the reactivity place. This is the entire point of having yoga, meditation, stillness. This is the practice so that we get off the wheel of reactivity and come from our natural place, our Buddha nature place, which is creative. Thanks, uh, Andrew, well, and for sharing that also with us. Mm -hmm. You've had some kind of experience, your um, talking about your journey and when storms happened. Can you tell us, um, share with my audience what lessons are tangible lessons that's going to benefit my audience uh, during this journey of yours? Mm. So, uh, one just comes to mind here and you ask a question. I did 15 years of palliative care with the adults in Toronto at different group homes uh, for seven years who had HIV and AIDS. And holding the hands of these beautiful humans as they crossed over. I learned a lot of lessons. And here's, here's number one that hopefully will resonate with your audience is that love is stronger than death. Love is stronger than death. And that's it. I took that with me the rest of my life and I'm saying it here today to you. Here's a second lesson that, that I love. 
I wrote a book of poetry called No Matter How Dark the Stain, Poems and Inspiration for the Woman in Pain. And I wrote that during the lockdown when I had heard that domestic violence went up 60%, 6-0%. So that means there's a lot of women who are sitting at home in pain. As I was writing the book um, that I wrote through my own episodes of rape, sexual assault, seven miscarriages, losing a baby, and I could go on there, but I think you get the point that I've had some things happen. Here's the lesson that I learned. Here's what I want your audience to know. The dark parts of your life and the light part are both love. It's both love. So if you're in a dark place right now, or you're in a light place right now, it's, it's all love, really, at the end of the day. The things that have happened to me, I am love. And that makes the dark parts of my life and the light both the same. And I don't think we're taught that in school. I don't think a lot of people know that, but it's something I learned from doing the hard work and from traveling on my journey. Here's the la last one I'll say for your audience. You have all you need within you right now to heal. You have everything inside of you to heal. I know that because I did it myself. I didn't have someone to pick up the phone and call. I didn't have people with me on my journey when I traveled the world to try and find magic potions and quick fixes. But everything that you need to heal is within you right now. There's a power inside of you. There's destiny inside of you. You are not what happened to you. You are what you do from this moment on. Let's talk about your book, Stillness in, in the Storm. Why do you think, or why should my... Well, you cut out just a little bit the there. For the, I like you to talk about your book. Stillness in the Storm, yes. Stillness in the Storm. I'm going to you. So why do my audience need to get the copy? What um, lessons, tangible lessons are there for us to learn? Okay, so in this book is exactly the words I would say to my yoga students that walk through the door of Ganga Moon Yoga. Uh, there are eight uh, yoga classes that are written out in nice words that you, if you were sitting at home, just you and your best friend could sit and read it to each other just to find a moment of peace. When the storms come and you open the book and say, um, what's one for example? Silently say, I accept myself, my circumstances, and world as it is now. I am happy. This is a happy moment. I accept myself, my circumstances, the world as it is now. I am happy. This is a happy moment. That's taking an extra breath for yourself. That is self-love. That is yoga. Why is that yoga? Because you have taken your mind and your heart in alignment, which is to yoga, which is to unite which is what yoga is. The beautiful thing about stillness is the storm is when you sit quiet and when you, when you do the practice, just like we said, just to repeat that mantra to yourself, there's space here in this book. There's space with a gentle prompt, breathing in, I am creator. And blank pages here, just with some lines. So you can write down your insight. What happens when you write down your insight? When you write down what you hear from silence on these pages, it's like a vortex. You create a space in your mind. And what's there in our nature? Health, compassion, wellness. So as the words come onto the paper, you're freeing yourself of whatever that is and capturing it in a moment because maybe your kids want to read that later right? Like there's reasons for that. But at the same time, you're freeing up mental space in your mind. And that's where your abundance and compassion and all of these good things flow. It's so amazing. And, and that, Thanks for at, sharing that, this. at that intersection, at that intersection where we, that's what the book is all about. It's that 
even during the storm, there's stillness. There's an intersection where your mind, where the pen meets the paper, and it's a beautiful moment. Yeah. And then you have the, the pretty book to keep it forever, right? If people come to your house, you can read yoga like it's my words, like I'm teaching in my studio. How amazing is that? Because they shut all the yoga studios down during COVID. That's crazy. <laughs> but you can have it at home and you can have it in your heart. And the thing about it's not about standing on your toes. It's not about being, you know, on all fours or, or touching your feet. You don't have to do that. If you can bring attention to your breath and hold that thought, there's nothing you can't do. Every breath builds on each other. It builds on. And there's a beautiful space there for your destiny to come through. Your art, your book, your song. And that's the world I want to live in. The world where all of the women that are sitting there quiet or in pain, maybe, are, are saying like, oh, I should do this. I should do that. No, 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 no. Let's do it. Let's hear what you have to say. That's going to change the world. That's going to light me up because we're all interconnected. And it's so important as women that we're, that we're flying at full mass, that, that we're following our destiny, that those little embers that burn in our soul to maybe do something are lit, right? Because that makes the world a better place. When, when one lady is risen, I'm risen. So we need each other. It works together. <laughs> Andrea, do you have an exciting news in the pipeline you'd like to share with me? Or with my audience, perhaps you like, uh, you have a, a great project in the pipeline that is beneficial to my audience you'd like to share. I'm going to ask you, do you mind repeating the question? I'm sorry. Yes, I am happy. If you have any exciting news, uh, informative mm -hmm. news you'd like to share with my audience, any projects in the pipeline that you think oh. it is beneficial to them. Yeah, I have exciting news just because it's this time of year. I'm in Canada and I teach a yoga class on the beach and it's called the Summer Solstice Yoga on the Beach. So pretty soon here will be June 20th, will be the longest day of sunshine in the year. I don't know what it is in your country where you are, but one day of the year, the sun is out for the very longest. And for this day, um, for the last 12 years, I rent a beach and I teach yoga at the beach. And the first year I had 11 students. And just before COVID, you could not see sand on the beach. It, the beach is full of beautiful, everybody, colors, age, race, um, handicapped children, babies and moms, um, and everybody. No one can hear me because it's a beach. There's no microphone to plug in, nothing. But everybody is moving the exact same way. And for miles, you can see. And it is the most beautiful thing in the world to me. So that is happening June 20th. And it's also happening July 25th. And I'm starting to plan for those things now. Besides that, I have a, a new journal coming out, which goes with my book of poetry, no matter how dark the stain. And um, in my dreams, what kept me up last night was a book of love poems and prayers together. So hopefully by the end of the year, those two will be out. So that will be four books in four years. Of great news you have it, Angela. Thanks for sharing with my audience. We wish yeah. you the best of luck in this project and the subsequent ones that you embark upon in the future. I love, I love what you're doing. So please keep going. And I couldn't be more honored to be sharing this moment with you. This is a happy moment. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks once again for the kind words, um, Andre. I'm humbled by that. Do you have any parting words you'd like to share and also your social media handles on your website? Yes, please find me at Ganga Moon Yoga on Instagram, on Facebook, LinkedIn. Also, Andrea L. Whalen. It's tricky to spell W E H L A N N. Uh, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook. There are free videos. You can see the beach yoga class on YouTube. If you need some help relaxing, there's free YouTube videos for you. All of the books are on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Indigo Bookstores, Stillness in the Storm, Deeper Days, and No Matter How Dark the Stain. If you have any pressing issues, then please just send me a message. This is 2024, and you can just inbox me on social media or somewhere. Email is gangamoonyoga at gmail.com. Um, what I want to tell you is the greatest illusion is separation. 
and we are interconnected. So um, keep going, never give up, and always follow your heart. Thanks for this inspiration, Andrew. Andrew, mm -hmm. well, um, you know, to us. Yoga and insight on some sort of thing on spirituality. I really appreciate your thoughts and your insights today on the show. And wish you best of luck once again in all the projects you embark upon. If you'd like to catch up with any missed episodes of Live Well Lit by Mobile Steven, you can do so on any podcast distribution platforms or any podcast community you bump into online. You can go online and search for Live Well Lit by Mobile Steven, and there you go. You have a great time as you listen to professionals and expert thought leaders share disruptive mindset conversations on topics or subjects under personal development and self-improvement. I always need you to stay safe. I talk to you soon.